Om y'all. So basically, you should be having conspiracy parties at your home. You should be calling up all your friends, anybody that seems kind of interested in um, alternative information, non-mainstream stuff, and put out some cookies, some tea and coffee, and have a nice chat about things sort of, you know, with the coffee table out and some books and some information, get your computer out, all of the things you've downloaded, information you've been looking at, and have a nice, comfortable party. There's no reason, you know, there's no reason why we have to be the whole Alex Jones, you know, black, dark type of themed people about these things. Um, thinking back to the history of my consciousness shifts, I think my very first hoax that I understood was a hoax uh, had to be the AIDS hoax and that HIV doesn't exist, viruses don't exist, nobody's proven them, nobody can take uh, a sample of fresh blood and show you under a modern uh, scanning electron microscope that, that viruses exist. And and that one was you know, health affirming. It was after my understanding that AIDS didn't exist, that, that there is a logic to who gets sick and who doesn't, and there is karma, and this got me thinking to my own behavior and morality and, and, and what I can do to be a healthier person. Actually, when I discovered the AIDS hoax, um, I was extremely unhealthy. This was um, 11 years ago. And I had 11 or 12 different conditions, problems. And um, it was horrible. My life was horrible. And understanding the AIDS hoax was a big step in the right direction previous to getting on the chastity bandwagon. Uh, the next hoax that I understood was the was the NASA moon landing hoax, and that one I found so funny. I was laughing for like, um, you know, I was laughing for like two weeks nonstop. I couldn't stop giggling to myself, laughing to um, laughing to my even in my dreams and things. I couldn't stop just laughing. This NASA hoax stuff is so funny. Um, just the crappy, you know, space modules, and they put them together with cardboard and gray tape, and you know, Phillips head screws, and um, several lighting sources, and they, they they make sure to get the Merc out there, put a special light on it, and they have the most silly, low quality, crappy stuff. The moon buggy thing always cracks me up that their story is that it's 200 degrees there and then they show us tires that would melt and then they have a picture of the buggy which I, I recommend you look at it's basically they took a couple lawn chairs <laughs> and stuck that on top and the the straps you know the nylon straps that they use on lawn chairs those things you know that's all coming apart it's, it's really funny and um so I found the NASA hoax to be, you know, it, it gave me more health because I was laughing and having a good time. Um, the next hoax that I, I figured out, I think was the biggest one, and I hope all of you look into it, is our sexualized world. Um, you know, basically the orgasm is just, it's not a big deal. Um, it's just sort of like a cocaine rush or something. And then people are basically masturbating on top of each other or in each other or, you know, and then, you know, raping each other, making each other dirty. And um, basically our creativeness becomes human excrement at that point if we're not making a family or doing something useful with it. And the basis of the entire control system that we have 
is represented in their mind by the star of Goloka, which is, you know, in Hinduism, the abode of Krishna. Instead, they use it as a sex symbol because they think six sounds like sex and they think it looks like a snake and everything goes hiss and hex means witchcraft and then the, the triangle going up is a dick and the one going down is a vagina. And so sex is the biggest scam. It's the biggest nothing of your life. You know, give it up, uh, do it with your wife and have kids or, you know, do really creative things with your life. You know, like Nikola Tesla, who has chased uh, Michelangelo, or you know the saints, you know, Buddha and Jesus Christ. We need to really get past the sex hoax and get past the sexualization of society, which is so insane. You know, they're they're dressing like four-year-old girls up as whores and you know, having dances and things. It's unbelievable, unbelievable the world we live in today. And um, then recently, the biggest consciousness shift that I've had is Flat Earth. That's, that's the one that's the biggest one that's happened after all of that. And, um, you know, the chastity thing got my health completely back, got my morality in shape. It did way too many things, amazing things, and there have been blessings you know, repeating those uh, blessings, continuing every year, there's sort of a new theme, so I can't really pin down <laughs> the primary advantage of cracking that hoax. Um, but, you know, the first stage was you know, getting my money back in order, you know, I, I all my money came back, you know, the white elephant of chastity of Ganesha was the foundation that, that, that brought the riches you know, and the riches and fame and I, I bought a house in a year and a half can you imagine that how many jobs how many things I was doing uh, I wrote a book in Chinese I did some really incredible things in my first year and then you know but the karma really hitting you it's like you know feeling sore after climbing a mountain you, the karma is really hitting you too. I, I had a lot of karma to pay back. So my life was also really complicated at that time. Second year, uh, second year I got into the, the whole fame thing, getting on TV, getting big interviews, um, lots of attention. <coughs> and uh, so it's been wonderful. But every year is a new thing. Probably three, four years ago, all that karma stuff is pretty much washed out. I've just been so blessed. I can't, I can't fast for anything anymore. I can't pray really hard for anything anymore because there's no crisis. It's just, it's all solved. Um, and then the flat Earth thing just um, completely conscious shifted. Just in the theme that is strongest with flat Earth for me is beauty, God's beauty the beauty of our world, the divinity that we are, that the creation is, and or the divinity that's within it. And it explains why when I see the sun rays coming through the clouds, I say, you know, like, hi, God, you know. And God's not in the sun. God's, you know, localized probably above the North Pole, kind of like our own North Pole. You know, our consciousness is localized and it's not limited. And that's that's what I think God is too. And he's not very far away. You know, he would be in this model, you know, 3,000, 4,000 miles up there. And at the top of that firmament there. And all this stuff is starting to piece together. The cosmology is the very basis of everything. It's the first page of the Bible. It's Genesis. It's... Why in Genesis 1, first chapter, 116, he said God made two lights. Not one light, and then the other is just fake. It just reflects the other one. That's you know, kosher science. We're looking at two lights you know, that are you know, pretty, pretty close to each other, and one is weaker than the other, which is the moon. And that's what it says in Genesis 16. And 
how important that must be to the way we view our existence, our life. It's, it's incredible. It's earth-shaking. And um, I definitely view the world as a more beautiful place. And I sense my role in it as being more important. I feel God more. I, I see it all. The things we have to study to understand Flat Earth are beautiful things. You know, the star circles and the way the, the constellations circle around us and the pictures of these things. Yes, yeah, some of them are actually CGI that they do with the <laughs> star circles. And, uh, but the general concept, the, the place where they start, you can point your camera at the North, sto uh, the North Star, the North Pole, um, the North Star Polaris, and watch it you know, go around. There's, you know, serious implications for these things, but then these pictures, videos, time-lapse photography of the time-lapse photography of nature and what's happening with the sun and moon. It's gorgeous stuff. And you find that NASA and these, you know, masons, they don't put this stuff in the front. They show you all this crappy CGI in their stupid, silly movies, you know, the Jaime Weird. I hate it. I really hate movies anymore. It's cold and fake. And you remember when CGI was a bad word, when people would say, well, this movie has CGI in it, and it's, and people wouldn't want to watch that. It was like when I was a kid, they'd say, well, lip syncing, that was lip synced. So it's fake and nobody wanted to listen to that song. Everything's lip synced now. You know, everything's fake now. The little girl lip synced the Olympics in Beijing. They, it's, it's all, you know, they, they CGI'd the, the fireworks in Beijing. These are just two simple examples. And I didn't watch those either. I just heard about it. <laughs> because I naturally don't like that stuff. I want to see reality. I want the truth. And it, the truth is really intense. It's beautiful. It's also unforgiving. If you don't clean up your life, if you don't clean the sin out of your life, you're not going to feel like this light of God is warming and wonderful. You're not going to see these images and think, wow, you know, hi, God, I, I really want to talk to you and, and understand you. You're going to start fearing it because that's what purgatory is. It's the light of God burns when it hits a sinner, right? When this reality and this truth comes to them, it, it puts them in a lot of pain. Um, so this guy having cognitive dissonance here at where I'm staying, you know, we have this cafe here. He came in this morning and he was just flipping out. He's like, no, the earth is a spinning ball and I'll tell you why. And he... he he was so flipping out, and I'm, I'm sorry he has to feel that way. You know, I'm sorry that he has to feel so tormented by reality and that he's not smiling and he's not enjoying this, this ride that we're on. Well, thank you very much. And those are my conspiracy experiences. Uh, I hope you all throw conspiracy parties at your own home. Bye-bye uh, and om.